Hello, welcome back to class 2 data stream mining in Weka Moa. So we arrived to the last lesson of this class. We are going to look at an application of classifying tweets. So let's start. Twitter is a very nice example of data stream because it's data that is produced on real time. So Twitter is a microblogging service that is built to discover what is happening at any moment in time. There are more than 300 million users more than 2,000 million search queries every day. And a very nice thing for us is that data is public and it can be accessed through a streaming API. In this lesson, we are going to look at the application of sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is the task of classifying uh, messages or tweets into two categories, positive or negative, depending on the feelings that we can see inside the messages. Many times it's very difficult to get uh, label data. In uh, sentiment analysis with Twitter, there is a very basic approach, but it works very well, is that we can get uh, label data uh, using the tweets that they have uh, emoticons inside. So many tweets, they have positives or negative emoticons, and then we can use this information to classify them as positive or negative. We can use all of these tweets uh, as a to train our model and then we can uh, predict using the tweets that they don't have emoticons we can predict what is the current uh, polarity what is the current sentiment around uh, any uh, specific uh, uh, product or company or or topic an important thing that we need to look when we are classifying tweets is that if data is balanced or not so let's look at an example so in this uh, simple confusing matrix, what we see is that we are predicting 82% uh, as positive and 18% of the instances as negative. What we see is that we are uh, classifying correctly th the positive class 75% of the instances and we are correcting the negative class 10% of the instances. So our accuracy in this case is 85%. Is this a good uh, performance? To answer this, one way is that we can look at a random classifier. Imagine a random classifier that is predicting randomly but is following the same distribution between positive class and negative class. So this is the confusion matrix in the bottom. So there we can see that this classifier is uh, getting also 82% of the instances as positives and is predicting as negative 18%. Interesting thing is that it's predicting the positive class correctly 68% of the time, and the negative uh, is predicted correctly 3% of the instances. So that means that the accuracy here is 71%. So that means that if our classifier is predicting uh, with accuracy higher than this, then we can see, we can say that it's a good classifier, but if it's predicting uh, less than this 71%, then uh, our classifier is not doing quite well. To see this, this is, as you may know, there is this uh, Kappa statistic measure that what is measuring is this difference, the difference between our the accuracy of our classifier with the accuracy of a random classifier that is predicting using the same uh, distribution of classes. So basically Kappa statistics computes this difference and then it adds a normalizing factor so we get a uh, value of kappa between 0 and, and 1. Now let's look at an application. So there is this Twitter sentiment corpus that was made by students at Stanford that uh, contains uh, tweets recollected between April 2009 and June 2009 where there are 800,000 tweets with positive emoticons and 800,000 tweets with negative emoticons. Uh, if we do an uh, sequential evaluation using these uh, tweets and we uh, use a naive Bayes multinomial classifier, stochastic gradient descent classifier and a Hobbes tree. What we see is that at the end of the stream, the stochastic gradient descent classifier gets an accuracy of 100%. So this is something that is not normal and then uh, it's nice to see why it's happening this. If we look at the Kappa statistic, what we see is that at the moment that the accuracy goes up to 100%, the Kappa statistic goes down. So that means that in that case, the data at that point starts to be completely unbalanced and completely only belonging to one class. 
In this data stream, if we compare accuracy and kappa of a multinomial naive base, stochastic gradient descent and housing tree classifier, what we can see is that uh, stochastic gradient descent is better, but this is something that uh, maybe not applied to other uh, data streams. What is very interesting is that in data stream mining, we should always not only look at accuracy, but also looking at the resources, at time and memory. So we have arrived to the end of this lesson. So in this lesson, we have seen an application of Twitter classification. Twitter is this microblogging stream service that is built to discover what is happening at any moment in time, and more specific, what is happening now. Mm, data may be unbalanced in many data streams. So it's always important not only look at accuracy, but also look at other measures as kappa statistics. So thanks for being there. I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.